Hello. Hello, Ben. The traditional greeting. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, ho, ho. A bimple stream, we will not go. Wait, no, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> we want, we want bimple stream, yes. How y'all doing? I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm doing all right. Uh, all right, let me open up Steam World Quest. I think we're maybe officially halfway through this game. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a nice chunky uh, portion of Steam World Quest today. I've got my iced coffee. No, I did not microwave it. As much as I was tempted to uh, commit to a bit, I, I would prefer to have coffee that I enjoy. Hello RGB. Hello Neville. Hello I am a tan. Hello Kevbo. Hello Ben. Uh, hello Bot. Hello uh, Dimethorn. How you doing? Dimethorn, uh, if you're still in chat, um, Pillars of Eternity is on the way, but a lot of things got in the way last week. Mostly me editing the Vintage Story episodes because, uh, you know, you know what drives my motivation to edit Vintage Story? Oh my god, I'm gonna have to close the window. Hold on a second. Stop with the construction all the time. Oh my god. You can stop building Toronto. It's finished. It's finished. You don't need any more. No more Toronto. It's fine. Um, what was I saying? I was saying something. Oh yeah, Pillars of Eternity on the way. Um, what drives my motivation to edit Vintage Story is really that I get to play more Vintage Story. So, if I don't edit what I have, then I'm like, well, I, I can't play more. I already have so much that I haven't edited. Okay, let me read what's going on in chat. Uh, new profile picture. Hi, Big. I made a spooky thing in a suit to use as a profile picture for the third segment today. Ooh. Oh, that's right. Today we're playing Under the Lighthouse. In the third segment. Thank you so much for uh, reminding me. And also joining me. And also watching. And also supporting. And also hit that like button. And also su subscribe. And also... Where's my poggers face? Hold on a second. I have so much trash on my desk. I eat so much candy that's not, it's not, it's not reasonable. It's not a reasonable amount of candy. Hold on a second. Cat, this is not the time. No. No. All right, I guess now is the time. What do you want, small? Yes, yes, okay, what? Wah. Okay, let me, let me read chat. Um, Kingdom Come Deliverance is an amazing medieval simulator. It is not an action fighting game. It's super fun, but you should try it before deciding a streamer series. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I'm like very much divided on it. Um. Don't worry, I'm, this isn't a bit where I get delayed for like an hour and never play SteamWorld Quest. Um, he, I have some thoughts on Kingdom Come Deliverance and I would like a confirm or deny. Does that game have awful combat? Be honest. If it has very bad combat but the game is still good, I may have to give it a pass because I cannot stand that. I, I, I talked a little bit last week about my my disagreement with Witcher, uh, the Witcher series, in that it, it, I'm sure it is an amazing game, but that combat has to go. If I was to play the Witcher series, I'd probably play it in, like, explorer mode or whatever, so I don't have to, like, do anything and just play the storyline. Combat is great. It has great combat. Okay, all right. Good to know. That's all I need to know. If everything else is, like, if there's problems everywhere else, that's fine. As long as I don't have to struggle with the combat. That's, like, the worst part. Um, do you have more Caves of Cud coming since they're about to update it? Yeah. Um, so, like, I keep talking about uh, why I haven't done any Caves of Cud content in a while. And I keep mentioning that I had a series on the on the, on the the go. The reason it hasn't been uploaded yet is because I keep, like, 
procrastinating uh, on editing it. It was a, gonna be a really cool series, but to truth be told, it wasn't even like a long series, and I just like keep delaying editing that. And that's just on me, you know, it's on me. And the other thing is Caves of Cud. I've, I've talked about this before, but you know, me and Cud have uh, a tenuous relationship. I love it, it's my favorite game ever, but also I need to take a break every once in a while. You know, we're, we're like, uh, we're like, you know, you used to be uh, in a loving relationship and then we realized we had to stay as friends. And uh, so, you know, like we can tolerate each other's company, um, but definitely we have to, you know, take breaks. I love Cud, but um, also Cud can can be a real pain in the butt. Um, you know, mostly because it's, it is a very difficult game, mostly because I have, there's still a lot about it I don't understand. And, you know, I like to learn, I like to learn how to play it, and that's why, but, you know, like, I... <laughs> At a certain point, I get bored uh, dying in exactly the same way a lot, and I have to I have to come like take a break and then come back. But qu your question was, will I have more content uh, or yeah more more cud when there's a new series or when there's new uh, content in the game? Yes, absolutely. I would be a fool if I didn't at least come back for that. Um, I'm actually very excited for the Moon Stair update. Um, I'm pretty excited, honestly, for Caves of Cud 1.0. I know that's probably next year, but damn. Um, I really want to see where the story goes. Like, honestly, I'm, I'm very excited for that. Uh, all right, let me read some more here. Do you have more Cud update? What did you do to me? Why did you have to, had to announce that you're going to play Ruina next? Ruina? Oh. Right. You mean uh, after I'm done quest? Yeah, I am going to try that. <laughs> no, no guarantees if I actually finish that, but I will be playing that after quest. It's a game that requires a lot of patience, especially in the beginning, so if you did it on stream, some people, including you, might get bored. All right, that's fair. Uh, have a nice day, RGP Fish. I liked the dead eyes. We're gonna call Toronto. Done. Dude, I said it in the YouTube comment you introduced us to a beast of a game, my friends and I have. Oh, oh, you've been having a lot of fun? Oh, you, yeah, yeah, you, uh, you're, you're, you've you been having fun with the Vintage Story. I'm glad. I hope that I can introduce more people to Vintage Story. To me, I know this is probably a controversial take, but I think it's, I think it's the better Minecraft. I'm not kidding. I, I, I don't think I'll ever go back to Minecraft after playing Vintage Story. Like, maybe my Minecraft with mods, because then you're just talking about, like, ad infinitum content to an already great experience. But Vintage Story is just, I don't know. It's exactly what I wanted Minecraft to be. I have a lot of thoughts about this, but I probably shouldn't delay Quest anymore. But I, I want to make sure that, you know, I read I read what's going on. Has very good combat, she's very involved. It's slower. You will have to struggle with the combat, but in a good sense. Kingdom Come's combat is based entirely around learning to do smooth, concise combos, and it's really involved, so some people find it difficult. I have a year and a half of weekly podcast recordings from five mics that I have never edited into one episode. That, that is brutal, my dude. If it's a year and a half, I, I would, I would call it, I would call it, throw it in the towel on that one. Remember to turn on live chat. Good reminder. Actually, should I be doing that as well? Oh yeah, I I should I should have been doing that the whole time as well. I wanted to Steam gift you Wolf Stride instead of Ruina to play. Ruina is a very long game and has difficulty curves steeper than a Venezuela inflation chart. I don't know if I've read a good thing just now, but I can't buy games on Steam because politics. Oh, because you're in a different country. Yeah. Uh, has any every anyone in the stream tried Symphony of War Nephilim Saga? Uh, I did. I play. I did a let's try of it. I got to. I got to get a key for it. It's a game I wouldn't mind doing a series on. Uh, it is also a very complex and deep game, uh, and maybe I'm not the best person to play it, but I I wouldn't mind doing more of it. It would might make a good stream game. I've been. Uh, 
evangelizing it. I truly agree with you. I, I really appreciate that, Ben. Thank you. I don't like Minecraft. It's bad. But, but coming in with the surprising hot take, what do you mean you don't like Minecraft? I can't believe you. You better make that your entire personality. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I forgot Pogger's face. Hold on a second. I hate you, Ducky Pad. That's not true. I love you, Ducky Pad. Poggers. All right. Just check. I gotta do a quick test. Uh, Pogger's face. All right, let's go. Let's go. We're gonna beat this game today. That's not true. That's a lie. I just told you a lie. All right, here we go. Oh, sorry, I'm skipping the story. After that bumpy ride, my wagon needs some rest. Ah, poor wagon. You just rest those tired wheels. Poor wagon. I don't like Minecraft. It's bad. It's an indie game that combines Fire Emblem with Ogre Battle 64. Never played both of those games. Yeah, uh, it's easy to miss those games now. Well, okay, Fire Emblem maybe not. Fire Emblem is pretty... Pretty ubiquitous at this point. Like, I don't know. I guess if you don't own a um, Nintendo console, then, then it would be easy to miss um, Fire Emblem. All right, what do we got going on? We got a, a Coblin. We got some nice creepy music going on. Oh, I've I, I've gotten used to pressing um, right, holding right click, to um, <laughs> get rid of a card. Is it? Has anyone else been playing uh, Vault of the Void? Because I have, and I really like that game. <laughs> That game is good. I've enjoyed Minecraft specifically under the uh, auspices of playing with friends and creating our own content. So, here, here's my thing about Minecraft. Um, Minecraft is, of course, a really important game. I, I, I just want to say that. Like, it's an important game because it has... It, it basically created its own genre. Like I think it's it's fair to say that the like the whole open world kind of voxel survival thing is is a genre. And it, you know honestly, you could even say that Minecraft is the progenitor for things like battle royale. I know that's going to be a, sw a a weird take, but if you follow the the breadcrumbs on the battle royale genre, it it kind of fits. It kind of works out that way. Um, so like. Minecraft, very important game. Not gonna, not gonna say that Minecraft is in any way, shape, or form a, 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 a bad game or one without value. But here's what I don't like about Minecraft. <laughs> here's the spicy take of, of the day. First of all, um, I find that the the progression in Minecraft is kind of stagnant. Like, what is what is the progression in Minecraft? You have different forms of armor and weapons. You have potions, and then you have enchanting. And then there's also this weird automation thing, which I don't think anyone except, like, absolute nerds enjoy. Like, um, maybe that's mean of me to say, but, like, for real, I, how can anyone enjoy redstone, like, automation? It's so weird. And, like, it's the only form of automation. Like, they're trying to add more creatures and stuff that kind of add automation, but it's also weird and doesn't really work. Like, it blows my mind that people are so excited for, like, a new creature that might pick up items and put them in your chest. And I'm like, my dude, download literally any mod pack. The first thing they do is add, like, 15 different ways to, like, pick up items and put them in your, in a chest. Like, the first mod that ever existed, basically, for Minecraft was an automation mod. Minecraft was... Like, it was born for automation. It deserves to have automation. But they're doing this really weird thing that just doesn't make any sense. Um, in comes Vintage Story, a game about, like, basically ancient or, like, really primitive technology. So, like, you would expect no form of automation in that game. Does it really well? Does it really well and very intuitively? Like, in a way that makes a lot of sense. Also, has a really, really good and user-friendly uh, handbook, so you don't have to actually wiki anything. I can't tell you how many times I've played Minecraft or a mod pack for Minecraft, 
and I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do. Oh, I got a wiki something? Hate it. Absolutely hate wikiing anything. I know it's a very small thing, like it sounds like a nitpick, but when you're playing a mod pack or a Minecraft or whatever, and and you're like, what is this new substance I got? And now I have to like alt tab or if I'm playing in full screen mode or like go to my Chrome, open the Minecraft wiki, Google something, you know, like it's just, it takes me right out of it. It's no longer about playing the game. It's about figuring out some mechanic. I, it's almost like um, the, it's almost like troubleshooting. I almost feel like I'm troubleshooting the game, you know, like this, it, it's like I, I haven't even, you know, I don't even know how it works and it's already broken. The only time you should ever Google something is if something is broken. I guess that's what I feel. The methodical pace of vintage story combined with almost all of the expressive elements plus the chisel, which is an item that if it existed in Minecraft, that's all people would talk about. It hits, makes me feel like it respects my time, right? So, like, I wanted to talk about something else, but uh, remember when a new Minecraft update introduced copper and it was 99% cosmetic? You can't make the tools, weapons, or armor with it? What's the point? There's still a huge gap between steel and diamond. Wait, there's steel? There's steel in my in Minecraft now? Let me make sure I'm not uh, shortchanging uh, quests, but this is a topic I really feel strongly about. The rest is worn out. I can't make out the name of the city or any dates. It must have been the original name of the cursed city. That was ages ago. Nobody's around to remember the real name. Um, so here's... Alright, we're gonna, we're gonna fight this lad. Random question. Is it legal to pick up and pet pigeons in London? What? The, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is <laughs> it... What? Is it legal to p pick up and pet pigeons? I have a story for you, um, but I, I, I don't want to lose the threads on this vintage story thing. Here's here's why I, I enjoy vintage story more than Minecraft. I feel like um, the best part about Minecraft is that is it, it is an abstraction of real life in the sense that it is um, basically um, abstracting a real world landscape like the I think it's um, impossible um, to suggest or to say that, well, I don't know what I'm saying here. I, I think that most people would agree is a better way of saying it. That the, um, basically the landscape generation, the terrain generation in Minecraft is almost unparalleled. It is the best part about Minecraft, right? Because, you know, that's the most inspirational thing about Minecraft. That's the most motivational thing about Minecraft. You jump in, you see a giant cliff, you're like, oh man, you know what would really make that cliff better? A, a giant house on top, or a castle, or, you know, like, I'm gonna build over here, I'm gonna develop this thing, I'm gonna make this thing look cool, I'm gonna, you know, like, and then, what are you doing? At the end of the day, what are you doing? Well, you're really just abstracting real life stuff again. You're trying to take a, like, a, a building, or doing some, you know, actual archi uh, architecture, and, like, building something that makes looks like something in real life and that feels good it feels like it roots us in some kind of reality right and so i think that that's why part of the progression system in minecraft lets it down because none of it is really rooted in any reality like uh, you know like i i understand that enchanting is is fine and i i like it okay um it doesn't really make a lot of sense and it never has to me anyway but that's fine um, oh, there we go. But, you know, like, it serves a purpose, but that's where it kind of begins and ends, is it just serves a purpose. The reason I like Vintage Story is because all of the, all of the progression and process in Vintage Story is following up on that, is their abstractions of real-world activities. Like, no napping in Vintage Story does not, like, is not accurate, is not an accurate portrayal, but... It is an accurate portrayal of the time spent making flint tools. And that's the important part, is the time you're taking to make tools in Vintage Story feels meaningful because it is an abstraction of that real world activity. And because it is like getting you from point A to point B in a realistic way. Um, when you said that the wildlife was different, I did not imagine it to be this corrupted. 
Look, looks like it always has. It's very disjointed, even by its own potential logic. Iron and diamond. Oh, my, yeah, okay. The, the only reason I, sorry, I didn't, I wasn't like being snarky. I, I was wondering if maybe they added steel to Minecraft because there is steel in Vintage Story. I admit that I had my doubts about your assertion, but now I see it clearly. The Necronomicog is most definitely close by. I've been playing a deck builder card game by my ten. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Uh, for the past week because Big said he's going to try it out. Library of Rena to brush my Ruina rust and be ready to help out on multi- Oh, I actually really appreciate that, I'm a 10, because I know that game is supremely complicated and uh, having a helping hand is going to really be uh, helpful. Like I kind of think of it, um, this is um, this is the last thing I'm gonna say about this vintage story topic because I know that not everyone's gonna be interested in it, and it is of course completely unrelated to the game I'm playing. But <clears throat> you know, like I know that most I, would I say a majority of chat is has been enjoying the vintage story uh, series. Like I think about it like Animal Crossing. The you know what is Animal Crossing's main theme? It's, it's not just like decorating, it's not customization necessarily, it's actually the, the passage of time. Like that's the best part about, that's the theme that drives Animal Crossing. Is like, you know, the changing of the seasons, the, you know, the slow development of your town or your house or your relationship with your, your villagers. They're all representations of the passage of time and i think that the devs of vintage story kind of understand that 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 and and like very much build that into the game um okay this is not good i don't have enough to play these three lads i do have enough to play these three lads though like they get that you know even if a ta if a task feels very laborious it's still satisfying so long as it's pretty intuitive and like you know, gets you somewhere, you know, like, I can't explain why I like, like, I, why I enjoy clay forming in that game. It's a very monotonous task, but the fact that it's getting me somewhere, the fact that it's, like, slowly getting me to something I need makes it super satisfying. And, and also, like, you know, the fact that it is intuitive. Like, I can't tell you how many mod packs I've uh, for Minecraft I've dropped and stopped playing because they're just so insanely unintuitive. So many of them are like, you have to get a void core and then combine that with three gears and then combine those with four plates. And, and the, the, you know, the crafting recipe just looks like some weirdo complex combination of like 15 different things that doesn't make any sense to me. And it... I just like lose my mind. I lose patience because I, I'm I, I like none of it makes sense. It doesn't, you know, it's not fun. I hate crafting recipes in Minecraft so much. <laughs> like for real. Oh, this looks good. Removes all helpful effects on one foe and deals 220% strength as physical damage twice. This seems like it could be a good card. Hey, Andrino. Anyway, um, I feel like I've maybe burnt out everyone on this vintage story topic, but I, I've been really thinking about it. Like, why do I like this game so much? It's not just because it's more Minecraft. It's There's something else. There's another reason. Well, this is awful. We are in Generation 7 on our pigs. I think five of our goats. It took three years to get milk. Yeah, no, that, like, that's exactly it. Is it, like, because it is so labor-intensive to get to something so simple, it makes it so much more satisfying. Is it possible to play Vintage Story multiplayer? Yes, it is. I wouldn't mind doing that in the future. But with whom? With whom? I don't know. I like this music. So, would you be pissed off if someone called Vintage Story just a modded Minecraft? I wouldn't be pissed off, but I would 
like explain to them why I think they're wrong. Like, okay, here, let me let me let me put it this way, Imatan. You you wouldn't necessarily be wrong, but let me let me put it this way. If if you want to diminutize Vintage Story as just being a modded Minecraft, I would say it's an, a really good mod. Maybe the best I've ever played. Because I've played a lot of modded Minecraft, and I haven't enjoyed any mod pack as much as Vintage Story. So, if we want to say it's just a mod pack, it's a really good one. Also, it has like little visual touches as well, so if it's a mod pack for Minecraft, then it also just includes Optifine, which is nice. Like little you know, dynamic lighting and stuff like that, like, you know. So, sure, I mean, if it, if you, if it's just a mod pack, it's a really good one. It's more like a total conversion. Okay, let's do this, and then we'll do this, and we'll do this. Uh, you may find interesting for Minecraft is Create. It feels a bit like Vintage Story, kind of overall. Um... I know that the, like, I, I believe the, the devs of Vintage Story originally were, um, mod developers for Minecraft. So, like, you know, not, it's, it's, like, of course people are gonna make that comparison. I just think that, um, it's not necessarily accurate. Having, let me uh, let me put it another way. Even if it was just a mod pack for Minecraft, I would still say it's worth the twenty dollar admission fee to buy Vintage Story, like far and above. But uh, that might lead me into another spicy conversation. Was hey, hey guys, remember paying for mods? Remember that that like existed for a moment? It was ter oh, it's Terra Firmacraft. Yeah. Was so lazy, he just uh, abbreviated Minecraft and then added his small two to it. <laughs> Bot coming in with the, the spicy take again. Yo, in my opinion, Albert Einstein overrated. Albert Einstein is overrated. He did nothing. He just had a weird hairdo and that's it. <laughs> So, is Vintage Story a standalone? No. Oh, no, Vintage Story is itself a complete package. I don't believe it actually includes any Minecraft code. I could be wrong about that. Also, um, our friend is gonna die here, if I'm not careful. Uh, I have never seen a paid mod outside of Bethesda's Creator Club. Wait, what? What happened? I wasn't paying attention. Did uh, did the lad here did not heal Copernica? Eh, we're gonna have to use a thing. That hair takes a lot of character. <laughs> Okay, what is this curse? What what is it? Okay, hold on. I I hate the way you have to find out things in this game. Uh a blind miss with attacks, is that it? I don't, I don't know what this new effect is, and I don't know how, like, what to do with it. Alright, well, we're just gonna continue. I think Vintage Story has atmosphere and intentionally... Intentionality. Einstein's status wrecked. Yeah, um... There was a brief moment where uh, Steam or Valve uh, was offering, well, I don't know how to put it. They had a service 
where you could uh, pay for mods. And the general consensus was that that is bad, don't do that. Which I think is kind of a shame. Like, I know this, maybe this is my, my controversial take, my second controversial take for the day. So I'm, I'm assuming that this effect means I can't heal at all. Because I, I don't seem to be able to heal at all. Um, I think it's a shame that the internet as a whole, um, you know, people in general, just basically slaps down the idea of paying for mods. I think that that is a shame because, you know, mod development at some point becomes a job. Like, it, it's, it's kind of absurd how much time and effort goes into, you know, making some of these mods, like... Can consider the Aether mod for Minecraft. Like, that's just a ridiculous amount of effort. Wait, am I doing this right? Okay, so we sh I should be able to heal myself now, but we're gonna do this. Actually, he's faded, so let's go ahead and hit the other one. Please get 100k subs faster. I want another giveaway. I mean, the, the giveaways aren't based on how many subs I have. Wait, no, no, actually, they totally are. You should spread the word of Bimple to your friends and family. Uh, please be my acolytes and, uh, you know... So on and so on. Jesus. I wanted to gift you a game. Instead of that, I wanted to sub to your coffee, but boom, I kissed asphalt, asphalt too hard and had to pay a doc to stitch me up. So sorry about it. No coffee sub. That's all right. I'd rather the... I mean, that sucks that you had to pay for your uh, asphalt <laughs> that's a weird way of putting that but I think you know what I mean I'm sorry about that that sucks this, these guys have been very tough I think mod donations and patrons should be allowed, but I like how they are essentially... Uh, I'm not sure what FOSS means. I, I don't know, like, I think that mod development, like... They, be they become their own game in a way, you know? Like, they become kind of, uh, so, I don't know, so intense and ambitious that they, they become a new, like, especially total, like, overhaul mods. Why shouldn't someone get paid for their efforts to do that, you know? Like, we're living in a society, my dude. We, we in a society. <laughs> And that person's got bills to pay as well. And if they want to make a mod that like dramatically improves the experience of a game I already enjoy, why shouldn't I pay them? I know, I mean, donations, sure. Sure, donations. I mean, you know, that's fine. But like, also, I kind of like the idea of, you know, also please pay me. <laughs> I don't know how to put it, but, um, you know, having a bit of a gate. I like, I like Itch.io. The way Itch.io does it is like pay what you want. It it bugs you for a donation. It bugs you to to pay a bit for um, a certain game or <clears throat> tool. Um, but you don't have to. But that small amount of guilt is just enough to make me pay every time. Big, you're in a forest and you have Copernica using lightning damage instead of fire. Well, I mean that's fair. But to be to also be fair, none of these people have been very foresty. I guess I 
I could change her up, but like, I don't know. They they seemed they seemed like they liked the 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 lightning. <laughs> All right, let's switch it up. I wish I could, can I save a, a deck. Is that does that work? That's like fine, right? Money. Free and open source. Well, okay, I think they should be uh, like I like open source as a as a concept. Zephyr Cape. What is that? Equipment. I'm assuming it's going to be something for Oh, dodge. Um do I want dodge? I don't think I want dodge. I have the concept that big companies see modders as game fans that will make the game last longer for free because they love it, which is not wrong in a way, but they deserve donations. Um, I feel like uh, Beth Bethesda single-handedly killed the idea of paying for mods just by themselves. Aha! Stand down and hand over all your money and valuable. Oh, sorry, all your weapons and valuables. Gross. <laughs> no, I like I like open source. I honestly think that more more things should be open source, like things that are just common use. Like, you know, I I don't know necessarily. I've always said I think that Minecraft should be open source, but I've then been told before that actually it already is. But that doesn't make sense to me because it doesn't Microsoft own it? Isn't it like kind of locks down in a way? Like I don't understand. I, I want things in general to be open source, but um, like I don't understand the <clears throat> where the where the that boundary lies. Very much drunk, so have a nice stream, everyone. I might just be silent watcher for a bit. Okay, I am a tan. Open sauce. When did the rhino get here? Big refuses to swap off the original party, so we're not gonna see furry bot or the psycho twins. <laughs> It's true. Why are you not using the foxy dude? Uh, it's because I'm lazy. Do you do you guys want me to switch to a different to uh, different party member? You again? Has the void army stooped so low as to resort to common highway of robbery? Uh, well, not really. After losing twice, to you guys they kicked me out. Yo, is this guy a new gonna be a new uh, companion? Hand over all your valuables. Here we go again. Third time's the charm, right? Eh, I only did it for I did it for nothing, honestly. Open sauce, good to learn. It also it does increase our defense. When did the rhino get here? If it includes more grinding, hell nah. <laughs> we've come a lot, we've come a long way. We're basically like he's not hitting anyone, and he's also taking like crazy damage. ROR is somewhat a somewhat grindy game. Uh, is that Library Ruina? What is ROR? I'm uh, I'm struggling here to know what that is. Risk of rain. I really like the music in this game. It's seriously amazing. 
like this this what we got going on right here is like some Diablo-esque music. Lord of the Rings? Oh. What is that? I'm sorry, Lord L O R oh Library of Ruina. <laughs> Guys, it's Library of Ruina. Is it grindy game? I, I don't doubt that. Would you classify Library Library of Ruina as being a JRPG? Um I'm a ten. I really need to know if it's legal to pick up <laughs> pigeons. I already bought some pe pigeon picking gloves. <laughs> <laughs> well, wh like, whereabouts are you? I mean, that might be uh, a different jurisdiction depending on where you live, right? I'm not telling you to tell me where you live, but I'm saying. This guy is easy now. Wheel away. Not Lord of the Rings. Lord of Rings. What is that crunchy sound? Is there a crunchy sound? Oh, this sound? This? That's my ice my iced coffee. That's my that's my microwave iced coffee today. Not even an RPG. It's not at all, it's not even Japanese, it's Korean. So it's a KRPG? It's just a KR. Have you consulted a lawyer specializing in... <laughs> I can't give you an answer, uh, but I don't think anyone can. That is such a bizarre question. I don't, I don't imagine anyone would have the answer for that. <laughs> Strange fellow, that one, but no more wasting time. Let's walk. Do 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 Well, here we are. I microwaved iced coffee. Only only a few seconds. Look at that. We're gonna do a second chapter, guys. It's it's happening. Chapter twelve. Into ruins. Into ruins. That's. That's what he said. He said that. Something feels off. Where are the merchants and the local riffraff? Normally by now you'd be swimming in peddlers trying to sell you junk or steal your stuff. Just point me towards the hot springs in the tourist center. Good grief, the comedian's a frog. Wait, what? Comedian's a frog, not a- what? Isn't it the other way around? I'm serious, and I'm nuts. There's some funny business stirring here. Funnier than usual, that is. Where's old Hawker Jim? You're right. Just think about what he want, went through to land a corner near the city entrance. To catch potential customers' eyes or wallets. He'd never give up his spot unless something serious had gone down. You suggest something about the customary uh, chicanery being at play here. Hey, those folks may have been swindlers and hoodwinks, a lot of them, but they still stood side by side. Sure, they'd steal from each other. But never cross the line into spilling blood. Or as Hawker Jim used to say, you pick one, pick on one po pickpocket, you pick on all of us. That's not important right now. Where's the Necronomicog? Well, we didn't say we knew exactly where it is. How many hundreds of chapters are there? I would say that we're probably halfway through this game. So, probably 20-ish or 20 more-ish. Abbreviatures are stupid. Language also stupid in general. World would be better if we spoke in just sounds and grunts. <laughs> Reject language. Return to monkey. Ooh. 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 
Wait, she's doing it too. <laughs> walla walla bing bang. How many uh, can you endure? <laughs> oh, an alchemist. We usually don't get many of your kind out here. And I see you've acquainted yourself with some of the notables here. Ah, nice to see you again, Bob. Did you get any of use for that Jimmy Root? Yep, did the trick and then dried up and withered. And the prism? If you don't need it anymore, perhaps you'd consider selling it back for a third of the price, of course. No can do. It got eaten by a dragon. I see. Well, they can be rather irritable. Bob, was it? So you're supposed to be the go-to guy on information around here? Go-to guy? I'd like to see myself more of a patron for the city. Here he goes. We druids have turned these ruins into a thriving farming society, benefiting from the moon's weekly apex. Weekly, are you implying that the lunar cycle is different here? How is that even... I'd rather look at the moon and see it as half full than half empty, you know what I'm saying? That is not how... Honoring the moon's generosity, we cherish its impact on nature by distilling a special juice. Oh no, don't tell me about your moon juice. A moon juice, if you will. That's a distributed, generous, gener generous, richly among our uh, ruin neighbors. Moon juice. It brings all the bards to the yard. Oh my god. Every new cask is celebrated with song and dance around our holy tree, followed by a brisk y run through the fields. Completely naked. Completely naked? I can't tell if he's shocked or into it. You should join us next cycle. It's going to be epic. <laughs> Such a fun stream. Well, Bob, can I call you Bob? That sounds... We're not going to indulge in any of your hocus pocus. We'll never know if Frog Lad was into it. I think he was. Once I woke up by the river. And when I leaned down to drink, I saw that I was wearing a horse's face. The long face you of shame, you mean? Wow, is that a joke? Hello? Hello? Hello, Mimesis. No, literally a horse's face. Ew. But where are my manners? Let me provide you with a sample of our delicious produce. Moon juice. <laughs> yes. Delicious moon juice. We're not interested in your moon juice, your twisted happy camper approach, or... No, oh, he drunk. He is into it. Slurp. Lunacy. That's fantastic. I love that. Raises Galio's strength and magic by two grades, each but inflicts him with despair for three turns. Oh, but for the sake of... Oh, he's drinking the other one. He stops slurping so we can start looking for the Necronomicog. What's that? We're looking for information on the Necronomicog. That's why we're here. Oh, it's buried beneath the city somewhere. Not even I know exactly where it is. It should have altered its surroundings considerably. Would you happen to know if any spot distinguishes itself as particularly shady? A place that people avoid or where strange plants grow? That pretty much describes the whole city. But perhaps the northern parts are a tad more shabby than the rest. People usually avoid them for some reason. Yeah, especially the old monastery and its surroundings. It's a, the perfect place to damp, uh, dump old uh, old things you want to get rid of. I need to go now and try out my pigeon petting gloves. I think it's fine to pet pigeons. I used to pet a pigeon. There was a pigeon in my neighborhood that was very tame. And he would let you pick it up and pet it and stuff. It was nice. Keep safe until you need them. The monastery is usually locked. I think it's probably fine, bot, because pigeons are not endangered. They only get persnickety about endangered creatures. If you'll excuse me, I have some uh, 
archdruid business to take care of. You about to get naked. I will recommend a game. It's called Wolfstride, and it's cool. And also, it's a game. One of the games there is, I might add. Oh, are you talking about one of those games that is very strange and maybe a little bit broken, but in a good way? What a swell guy. Oof, I don't trust this kook one bit. Half moon? I say we take Bob at his word and start looking for the Necronomicog in, in the northern parts of the city. Alright. Here we go. Okay. I changed my thing again. Do 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 do. I like this music. I like all of the music in this game. Like, game has done very well with the music. Look, druid art. I wouldn't call it art so much as turf tagging. If the symbols are important to the druids, then maybe it is worth keeping them in mind. Uh, I wonder if that's like going to be a thing. So do do we want me, like are the twins are level twenty three, so they're not too under leveled. So we could swap someone out. Who would we swap out for Terra and Thane? Terra and Thane. I don't even know what kind of deck they have. Let's have a look. Siphon mine, steel strength, cut purse, twin combo. They seem to be kind of strength based. It might be a good idea to swap out our Milo for him. For them. Let's do that. And just to try him. You know, like, I, I don't want to be accused of being uh, not experimental or anything like that. Alright, let's check. So we have Axe Chop. This card is in your deck. Deals physical damage to one foe. Ignored Squad. Um... Physical damage to one foe. Let's take out those. We'll probably have something better. Steel strength. Siphon mine. Lowers one foe's magic and raises terror and thanes. So they do magic damage or physical damage. Oh, I see. This twin combo does quite a lot of damage. It does arcane damage. No, it's an awesome Brazilian mecha RPG that also gives off... Uh, Cowboy Bebop vibes. Also, Andrina recommended you a game. Please check out this recommendation. Soulstone Survivors. All right, let me check it out. I feel didn't I did I not play that one? Soulstone Survivors. Oh, no, I haven't played this. All right, I'll download the demo. I have some pretty good stuff lined up for the feature segment today, guys. But I'm I'm also game to try this one. I, didn't I try this one? It looks familiar. No, I didn't play this one, did I? It looks it looks pretty cool though. I gotta say. So there's Soulstone Survivors, and then there's another one, Rogue Soulstone. Did I play Rogue Soulstone? I did play Rogue Soulstone. Isn't that the game I played? The, the devs watched me and I was very cruel about it? I was very mean? You typed a lot about it. Do you remember Rogue Soulstone? The roguelike I recommended you, but it was way early access. So the devs updated a lot and released a new game similar to Vampire Survivors. It's called Soulstone Survivors. Cheese juice. Sorry, I had to read Neville's comment. It was very important. Um, uh, I will also recommend a game is called Wolf Stride. All right, let me have a look at Wolf Stride as well. Wolf Stride, there it is. Oh, I've uh, I've heard of this game. This game has quite a lot of style. I'm surprised it's not in my rec uh, my my wish list. I don't care about anything called Survivor. I can understand being burnt out by the Survivor genre. Um, I'm a tan, but there's still the games being released that, like, in that genre that I quite like. So. Um. Okay. Do I want to add another. 
steal some gold once per battle. Okay, this isn't bad because then it disappears out of the, the deck. Uh, maybe we, we, we want to do like steel strength. I feel like we want to like get rid of the like some axe chops and do like one siphon mine, one steel strength. And then I'll do one axe chop and that way uh, twin combo will do way more. Okay, um, maybe not. Okay, this isn't bad. Microwaved cheese juice. I, I think that microwaved coffee has the potential to become cheese juice. I mean, anything is cheese juice if you're brave enough. That didn't, literally made no sense at all. Alright, we're trying the new character. We're gonna do uh, Siphon Mind. Oh yeah, they've, they're gonna have their own combo as well. Siphon Mind, Siphon Strength, and then Axe Chop. Oh. Uh, Galio has been time locked. So let me guess, uh, fire is now no longer what I want. I probably want lightning again, don't I? Okay, uh, twin combo, let's do it. Actually, let's like, get rid of some of these. Aha, perfect. Not perfect, actually. Fool's gold also costs some. I hate how it did make sense. Anything can be cheese juice. <laughs> Wise words were never spoken by me. Or, or wiser words. Wiser words were never spoken. Which really says a lot about me, if you think about it. You can look at the enemy's weaknesses in battle to get a feel for what element is best. Okay. Well, I can't because I killed them. They're dead now. I like this uh, kind of greenhouse area we've got going on here. We got another rune here. So should I be writing, writing these down? One was like a, a lightning bolt, and then this one is like a downwards pointing arrow. All right, let's have a look at what these guys are weak to. Uh, okay, so they are strong against lightning, but then the other ones are weak against lightning. So kind of doesn't matter what what we do. Ba 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 ba. Is that, a jo is that a JoJo reference? I don't know. Which part? I'm fully willing to take credit for a good old JoJo reference. <laughs> do 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 Steel strength. Cut purse. Twin combo. Honestly, dreading for the time when he's done for this game and gets to play. 
been longing? You mean you, you're looking forward to it? Why? Because are you are you worried that I'm not going to like the game or that it's going to be boring for everyone? Because don't worry about that. Because it will. <laughs> it will. No one will like the game. No, I, I, I think that uh, here's my prediction for Library of Rowena is I'm going to struggle for a long ass time about the rules, the mechanics. They're not going to make sense to me basically at all for a while. But I will eventually get used to them. Um, hopefully you'll help me in that regard. Uh, I think that the story will come across as being super anime for a lot of people, but uh, I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. And eventually, uh, via the powers of, uh, what's, that, what's that term? I always forget the term where uh, you take someone hostage and they eventually fall in love with you. That, <laughs> we, will, we will inundate people with Library of Ruina long enough that uh, they will just, you know, come to terms with it and get into the story. The story is actually pretty interesting. Like, I did like it. I just didn't like it enough to try and learn. Like, let me be clear. I, I was interested by Library of Rowena. I just at the time was not willing to, to learn it. Like, I had so many other things uh, to play and to figure out that it just didn't feel worth the time investment. So I am I am interested. It's sort of like, you know, honestly, it's the perfect first segment game because like um, Steam World Quest, like I, I, I wanted to try it and I knew it was a good game. I just did, wasn't willing to put in the time at the time. So that's why I refunded it. Steam World Quest, very much the same kind of deal. I, um, you know, I, I wanted to you know what? Let's give these guys some stuff. Except for Cape and... Yeah, that's that seems like a good call. Um, you know, I, I, I played SteamWorld Quest a long time ago, but I never finished it because it was like, you know, I have other things I could be doing right now. And that's, you know, sometimes you're just not feeling up to a certain game. Stockholm Syndrome. That's the one. You, you figured it out. Sherlock Holmes Syndrome. Everything is Stockholm Syndrome if you're brave enough. See, that's gonna make sense as well, right? Did, did, I did it, right? Hello? I'm feeling pretty good about switching our mellow out for the, the two lads. They, they seem all right. I was worried they were going to be a little bit underpowered, but they, they seem to be faring okay. Wait, I should do the Fool's Gold first because I can get some more money. Everything is <laughs> We found a new bit, guys. It only took us like 16 streams, but finally we have a new bit. I can hang up the puppet, finally. Looks like I'm out of a job. Oh, here we go. Uh, I didn't see, like, a lot of symbols, honestly. Look, a whole art exhibit, exhibit, uh, exhibition. Didn't Bob say the monastery is usually locked? That makes mo those symbols more likely to be some kind of puzzle connected to that door. Okay, we're gonna have to go over here, I'm assuming, so we can see more symbols. Had to AFK, what spicy takes did I miss? I don't think you missed any spicy takes. The only spicy take you missed is that we're going to be playing an anime game after we finish SteamWorld Quest. I guess I could upgrade uh, these.
I should have done Searing Lash, shouldn't I? Do uh, different, like, characters, cards, like, take different stuff? Ugh, I, I couldn't have asked that in a worse way. What I'm asking is that, um, do different characters' cards upgrade for exclusive materials? Like, if I upgrade a card for these lads, and I'm never going to remember their name, I'm sorry, um, does it take materials that is exclusive to their upgrades? I wish I could upgrade uh, Steel Strength. We should look at craft cards, shouldn't we? Encourage. Heal one ally and removes all harmful effects. Hot Iron. Yeah, let's make that. That sounds like a good one. And Execute sounds good, too. Hmm. Does it? Hamstring. Oh, and it combos with the uh, twins. I have... Wait, what? Everything has potential if you're brave enough. It is very much anime, even as it's opening, which is a banger. It is a banger. Oh, I like this card a lot, actually. Icebreaker, water bullet... Deals physical damage to one foe stronger against taunted foes. Oh man, I could have made some banger Copernica cards. This frost card looks really good, but I need more scroll fragments. Can I buy those? Materials. Yes, I can. All right, drain life, double swing. Hidden blade. Inflicts despair. So despair makes it so that they can't heal, right? Raven Strike deals arcane damage to one foe and inflicts blindness. That sounds really good, actually. Um, Culling Axe. One foe stronger against foes affected by sta status ailments. This is a, this is, I'm gonna say it, kind of getting complicated because there's a lot of cards that synergize with a lot of other ally cards. And I'm struggling to remember what cards belong to who. Maybe I should get Brain Freeze. We should get like more Frost cards so I have another uh, effect basically. I need two more scroll frag. Oh no, I only have two scroll fragments. So I'd have to buy eight. Can I buy eight? Yes, I can. Um. Deals physical damage to all foes, heals allies. I wouldn't mind having like one, like nightmare sounds good. I wanna have, I wanna give the twins like one arcane and then one physical damage. I'm gonna buy some more scrolls. Kinda wish it would just like buy the scrolls necessary. So like, I wanna get this nightmare. And then also uh, drain life maybe. It looks like I can buy more. I'm gonna stop there though, because I want to 
try and actually build my deck here. The, the things are getting a little bit complex. Um, we could switch to Frost for a little bit. Oh, and I have to upgrade some cards, don't I? Uh, we can't upgrade anything because that, yeah, that's all like scroll fragments and I've kind of spent everything. I'll upgrade this and I guess I can upgrade some of our Millie stuff, which I will be switching back to her at some point. Um, upgrades Hot Iron maybe or Bravado. Uh, I don't like, I don't like Double Edge. I'll upgrade Heroic Strike. Okay. So now we go to decks. Let's see what we can change up. So first of all, let's get rid of one of these Steel Strengths. I like the Steel Strength and Siphon Mind. Those are really good. I'm going to get rid of um, <clears throat> these Fool's Gold maybe. Yeah, let's get rid of the Fool's Gold. Um, inflicts a curse that deals arcane damage to one foe whenever they take damage. Oh, that sounds really good, actually. So, okay, I'm gonna get rid of Cut Purse. I like the idea of it, but, um, I don't think it's particularly helpful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in one Raven Strike. So that's one arcane. We're gonna, we have twin combo, so that's arcane and physical. And then we're gonna put in a Death Pulse, which is Arcane. <clears throat> so we have one Arcane and one Physical. Do we have, do we have what? Right. Yeah, Raven Strike is Arcane. I guess Death Pulse is also Arcane and it's also a high Steam cost card, so maybe we'll take that out. Um, Axe Chop is our Physical. I guess Fool's Gold is a physical attack. So is Cut Purse. I'll put in... I kind of want to put in Nightmare. Maybe I'll take out... Steel Strength? Nah. Because this is also a debuff. Like, these don't just, like, upgrade uh, the twins. They also debuff the enemy. I, I, I think I want to put in Doom. Doom sounds really good. That just sounds like a really good card. Oh, I guess I'll put Cut Purse back in. Okay, this isn't necessarily great, but it's something. Uh, in Brazil, we have something called... Uh, I can't read that. I'm sorry. Which is a cheap street barbecue, but the name is kind of bad. Alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to pronounce that, okay? Chirquinho de Gato. We have a dish called similar to pigeon called Gulipstay. Gulipstay? Gulipstay? I'm sorry. I can't. It's basically ground meat and cabbage wrapping. Boiled usually in tomato sauce. They tasty as hell. That sounds really good. And actually, that sounds kind of keto, which I could I could eat. I could eat that. Um, so... We could switch to ice just for the sake of switching things up a bit. If you add it to your deck converting. So sleep combos with the twins really nicely. You could take out like one flame wave and add in a sleep. I think that Galio is fine. I don't think there's anything I should change about him to be honest. Maybe we'll add a poison. Honestly, let's take out team repair and put in poison. Team repair is fine, but it's not a very good heal. I hope you all don't mind me just like tinkering with the deck for a moment. Am I going backwards? No, I am going forwards, okay. Hey, Big, do you stream randomly or do you have a schedule? I do have a schedule. I stream every Tuesday at 12 p.m. EST. Uh, I'm going to try and make a habit of, as soon as I'm done this stream, I'm going to set up the 
next week's stream, so it'll be in the uh, catalog. Can can you guys give me a little bit of information about how the stream appears in your feed? Like, is it visible at all times, or is it just like any other video in YouTube? Does it just kind of like scroll by, like, oh hey, a big added a uh, a live stream that will be occurring next week or something? EST fam, yo, East Coast, our location, geographically speaking, is very important. <laughs> Stream appears on front page as tile. Does it, how long does it stay there? Does it stay there, like, is it there when I, when I make it? Or when it goes, I guess you guys did uh, see it, right? I have notifications for your channel on. I guess what I'm really asking is, would it benefit anybody, including myself, but mostly myself, if I put the next week's stream up right as this stream stops so that it is available for like a full week? Or would it just mean that that would make the stream like be visible for a few moments and then you forget about it because it's, it's like a, a full week that it's there? Can someone give me a refresher on the game storyline? Is there one? Okay. So, um, originally we started with Copernica, Armelli, and Gallio. Their, their village was uh, fought by the Void Army or something along that lines. Then they ventured off to try and help the Adventurers Guild. The Adventurers Guild told Armelli to blow because they're a bunch of jerks. Then they found out that the Void Army was working with the Alchemists, uh, like university or college or whatever that Copernica came from. They went to the alchemist like college to kind of meet with the headmistress. The headmistress revealed that the Void Army is trying to do something with the Necronomicog. She was planning on using the Necronomicog to do some weird like otherworldly powerful stuff and reach like reshape the universe kind of stuff. So now we're looking for the Necronomicog. The Necronomicog is apparently down in these ruins that the twins are from twins were at the uh, um, alchemist college looking to steal some stuff so they were like yo we want to steal some stuff but uh, you know also I think our hometown is in danger their hometown is basically a ruin that a bunch of their friends live in but also the Necronomicog the, the presence of the Necronomicog is probably also why it's a ruin because it seems to reshape the environment around it and warp things around so right now we're trying to get into some kind of chapel. The chapel is probably where the Necronomicog is, but the Void Army is also trying to get the Necronomicog for reasons unknown. There's also a dragon somewhere, but I don't know. And that's pretty much a full recap of the story in this game. Yes, I have been paying attention, but my brain chooses when and where to selectively remember uh, what, what, what happened. Indeed, but you can still spot quite beautiful architecture underneath the fatigue. This fixer-upper right here looks interesting. Uh, don't drag behind. Let's keep looking. Must have been quite a struggle growing up around here. Well, not just around here. On this very spot. You mean this shack? This shack is the old city orphanage. Uh... Stream appears on front page as tile and in subscription box. I have notifications of. It shows up on my notifications depending on a uh, dependent of YouTube. I'm not sure that it has a pin status in the app. That was a really good recap. Thank you. No, no worries. When is feature segment? Probably at the end of this chapter. I, I need to play this game because it's going to take forever for me to beat it as people have commented. Pay no attention to him. He suffers from a severe case of foot and mouth. That's okay. Funny, this place is probably the closest... Oh my god.
Yes, that was a fire alarm. There may be another one. I completely forgot there was going to be one today. This is really good. <laughs> Funny, this place probably is probably the closest we can call home. But the managers weren't very parental. They did not treat you in a proper manner. They rented us out to a gang of mercenaries who worked the southern boom towns repeatedly. What? Thieves small enough to sneak into fancy. Sink into a fancy establishment and open from the inside were always in high demand. Eventually we made tracks for good and set out on our own. Why well, do it twice in a row? What else am I supposed to do? It's just a very good face for the alarm. If ever any every everybody had enough of this this is your life for now. Oh, so if everybody's had enough of this is your life now for now. I'd suggest we keep moving. Against all odds. You thought it was over, but it was me. Dio! Foot in mouth, our heroes decided to limp on towards glory. I, I apologize for that. I don't know. Should I, like, is it really loud? Should I mute when, uh, when, when that happens? Because I can do that. I just, I didn't think it was going to, like, I have a compressor on, so it shouldn't be that loud. But a confer confirmation from you guys would, would really help me out. <clears throat> it's loud, but not that loud. Is it louder than me? Why do the alarm test twice in a row? How many freaking fires could happen sequentially? Welcome to living in an apartment in Toronto. <clears throat> I, uh, I really like where I live. I'm not going to talk about where it is because, uh, you know, for obvious reasons, but I really, I really like where I live. It's, I think, one of the best places to live in Toronto, bar none. But, um, I do live in an apartment building and unfortunately that means I share the fire alarm system and they do a test once per month and that's pretty brutal for doing recording basically anytime I uh, anytime there is a fire alarm I probably have to do editing that day <laughs> oh my god okay you know what let's do a double mend on what's her face and actually let's no, we'll, we'll, we'll save a bit of steam. Maybe 30% louder than you? Okay. Do, do, do. Aw, I just barely don't have enough, I think. Oh, no, I do have enough. Nice. It is not louder than me. Well, at least if there's room for doubt. I'm not, I'm not, you know. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry about that, y'all. I, I should have uh, been, well, I don't know what I could do. Like, here's the, 
Here's the thing, you wouldn't, y'all wouldn't want me to cancel stream because there's a fire alarm, would there? Would you? Like, if I knew there was a fire alarm today, you wouldn't want me to say, hey, I'm gonna cancel stream because that's happening. Because it's it doesn't last very long. It affects the quality of the stream, but hey, the quality is already in hell, so... <laughs> we, uh, we may as well commit to the bit. At least for me, why you do this? <laughs> I, I guess I could have healed uh, Copernica there. I think we're all just glad you're safe. <laughs> That's my uh, bimple is safe alarm, actually. I I have to I have to do that at least once a month. I, uh, I ring my bell really loudly when, when, uh, when I'm safe. Occasionally I, I do, um, scream, like, out the window that I am safe as well. Hey, Sock. It also made m me physically hurt by laughing. <laughs> well, as long as I could cause a little bodily harm, the stream is a success. A success. A success, I say. Alright, let's put you to sleep. Sure. It's not a combo, but it's going to give us a, a bit of uh, steam so we can prepare for another turn. She died. All right, all right. Hello. I'm pretty sure... Like, once I open up the chapel, we'll be fighting a boss, and then that'll be the end of the chapter, if y'all are wondering. We have been doing this for an hour and a half, so I'd understand if some people were, uh, done <laughs> with this a little bit. But, uh, you know, I kind of want to keep going. Like I said, I've been, I've been shortchanging this game a little bit, and um, I do want to get through it. But I do have a lot of good stuff for this, the middle segment. Uh, I have my first game of D&D I'm running tomorrow. Yo, what do you got prepared? If you don't mind. Is it a level one campaign or you're all starting at uh, a higher level? If it helps big, this is like the final third of the game. Really? Is this game shorter than I thought? I kind of like the twins, guys. I think I like them more than our Millie. All right, we have another symbol. I'm writing it down. I wrote it down in my little book here. I've got a little book. It's good. It's important to have a little book on your table. You know, you, you gotta have a little book so that you can write your little nerd stuff in it, you know? And then you can come back to it later and look, oh my God, look at my nerd stuff. It's in my little book here. I wrote it down in my little book. Now I don't have to remember it because I wrote it down in my little... <laughs> I don't know, I don't understand either, so don't worry. I, 
I wrote down here in my little book that I'm okay. I'm, uh, I've got a bunch of bits written down here in my little book. I still have fond memories of the time you got me to play a demon squirrel. Oh, in D&D? &D? Did we play D&D &D together? I forgot that completely. Actually, we don't want to wake that one up. Let's do that to her. Look at my nerd stuff. I wrote it down on my little book. <laughs> I have uh, I have some bits written down here. Uh, on the top of the page, it says, uh, do a bit about how I write down things in my little book. It's a good one. I, I, I wrote that in bold. It's important to write things in bold in your little book so that you know the important things, the important nerd things that you have written down in your little book. Do you really have a booklet of quips? Because if I did a stream, I genuinely would. <laughs> of course I do. I've got it written down here that I have to uh, ma do a bit about Stockholm Syndrome. And also, uh, anything is a little book if you're brave enough. <laughs> Yo, oh, is she dead? Oh no, she's 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 just frozen. Is she dead? Oh no, she dead. Uh, man, I'm not progressing very quickly here. I spend a bunch of my time stuffing the party's bags with silverware. I forgot about that. Was that the one where, uh, were y'all uh, traveling on a ruby road? I remember, I remember I did one campaign with the, uh, Discord friends at the time. And we, <clears throat> I set up a road that y'all had to travel on. I liked that campaign. I had, I'd put a lot of effort into that one, but it didn't go very far because, uh, as, as is normal for... D&D campaigns, every, a lot of people got distracted by uh, a squirrel, of all things. Like, it was really... Um, we're on this crazy adventure that I had spent weeks planning, but oh my god, there's a squirrel! I want to capture it and make it my friend and pet. Well, that's really bad timing. I think D&D is the perfect e real-world example of QA testing. Like, if if you want to explain what QA testing is for, to anyone, just have them, like, DM a game. Have them make their own content. Have them, like, sit down and uh, make, spend, like, actual time, hours, uh, you know, making a storyline, a, a dungeon with puzzles laid out. You ha they have an intention in mind for the players to, to do certain things, and then see what happens. And that's what QA testing is, I think. I have a, I have a midget friend. Are we, are we... I know this is probably problematic to ask, but is it, is it okay to say that? I thought, like, it, was it not little people? Or was it dwarf? I don't... Like, I, I want to be sensitive to whatever they want. Basically, bad guys captured fairy dragons from Fae Wild and used their breath as a narcotic. So, player party B, like, we're gonna save these dragons, but then boom, and portal to Fae Wild opens and, re and red caps. Okay, that sounds really cool. That sounds like really, really fun, actually. Not that I doubted you. It's your first campaign. There's absolutely room for, like, you know you're learning and you don't necessarily know how to DM. Um, so you, you're, you're open to making mistakes. Just like, don't be me and like, basically stop your campaign because the players didn't do anything that you expected. And all I'm saying is, 
I, I think the best advice I can give to someone who's wanting to learn how to DM is have a bunch of like really crappy stuff prepared for when the adventures undoubtedly uh, like walk off the beaten path. I think the best resource you can have, and I'm a 10 if you wanna talk to me after the, the um, stream is over, is download a bunch of supplements that are just like extra campaign stuff. Like I have a bunch of stuff like that, just like 100 adventuring ideas. And as soon as the, pl the players like, you know, walk away from your prepared adventure, just like throw them, throw them like a, a random crappy adventure that you have lying around in your little book. You write that down in your little book. Write down in your little book that you have like a hundred little crappy adventures for them to go on. You can also ad lib it, but it's probably better just to write it down in your little book. <laughs> Lots of people try to claim that midget is uh, is a bad word. I'm not even gonna say it like that. Except you can say midget and you can't. I I I know the bit, but I don't actually know if you can say midget. I, I feel like I've already made a mistake in saying it. Do 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 Hey Hidden Blade looks like a good one. That's another physical attack. So let's um can we upgrade anything? No, not really. Okay. So we're gonna take out cut purse and put in um hidden blade. D and D behind the screen. So I okay. Um, I Kevbo. I have three symbols written down here, like only three. Oh, I see. Okay. Ah, uh, I get it. All right. Never mind. I was about to ask you what 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 do I do here, but I I, I get it. So first it's the lightning bolt, then it's the downward. No! Well, maybe it'll still count. Yeah, it does still count. I'm not doing a campaign, I'm doing a one shot. So I'm not that really scared about them going off and doing their own stuff. Best advice I heard is not be scared to suck. That's, that is life advice right there. Okay, if the Necronomicog really is around here, we should probably talk about the best way to approach it. Indeed, a clear cut arrangement is the artery to any coup de meter. Armili, this goes without saying, but let's not just rush into things blindly. Not pointing my any fingers here, but uh, uh, Armili, did you hear a word of what we just said? The grinding gears of endless time had once again halted to catch their breath. Sigh. Isn't that a passage from your handbook? Hello, anybody home? Humbled by the grand sanctum of our heroes decided to sort their bearings. Suddenly the base of their skulls started humming with intuition. Glory to the brave, Leroy! How could I not see this coming? I think that maze thing in the Alchemy College was the hardest puzzle this game had, honestly. Hey, Auric. The Necronomicog doesn't by any chance have a long pointy tail, does it? Nothing of the kind. It holds the shape of a round, perhaps even slightly oval cog. Ah, right. How about a long, long sharp teeth? None whatsoever. Its prongs are more towards the short and blunt side. Got it. I don't suppose it has a uh, foul breath and drools worse than a forest ogre either. Correct, it neither has nor does. Check. I have good news and bad news. Splendid, let us have it. Guys, I think you'd better come here. Oh, 
Let me guess the bad news. This is not the Necronomicog. Yeah, total bummer. And the good news? Come on, gang, a chance to beat up another dragon. Oh yeah, we getting the good music. That's the good good right there. Uh, I think that may thing. Okay, never heard about that novel. If you're ever singing along to little person rap and you hear... I'm gonna have to stop reading chat for a little while. Chat's, uh, chat's getting spicy. We fought that dragon three times already. Listen. Oh, okay. Uh, is paralyzed like a chance based thing? Did I just get like really unlucky? Yo, can we stop getting twin stuff? There we go. That's better. Good thing I'm not using lightning stuff, huh? You said that poison's really good on a dragon, and I believe you, but I'm gonna do some other stuff first. Uh, okay. Because I'd rather get the combo off first. I have the poison, though. I love the music in this game so freaking much. Like, this is bordering on, like, freaking, like, a Yes concert. It actually kind of does sound like Yes. Like, it, it straight up sounds like the, the Yes song that everyone knows. You know the one. Is that a dragon? But still catching doves. We uh, poison and blind are insane on all bosses in the game. They saved my life so many times. Even against the final boss, I had two of each in Galio's deck. Look how many times the dragon missed after being blinded. Are we taking damage from uh, hitting the dragon? I can barely hear the music over the relentless whirring of my fa laptop's fans, barely holding on. The heat death of our... <laughs> Easy peasy. I actually ended that combat at full health. That's kind of uh, incredible. Twins for the win. They did do a really good job. Feel that steam rush. Snap out of it. We still haven't found the Necronomicog. At least we didn't pay Bob anything for the useless information leading us here. It seemed to me that he knew a bit more than he let on. Maybe we should return and be a bit more persuasive. After defeating another dragon, our heroes decided to return to the self-proclaimed patron of the city. How is your experience? Do you like to cook? Can you share with us the most unique dish you have ever cooked? Uh, pizza. <laughs> I know that's not unique. I don't I'm not, like. Do you mean like dish that is not unlike anything else, or do you mean like most uh, like? Um, uh, ambitious thing because pizza <laughs> I, I I used to make a lot of pizza and I really liked it I, I had things down to a like a, a science I had uh, basically 
you know, I, I, I have a, um, a cast iron pan and I would throw the, the dough in the pan and like make the pizza in the pan while the bottom of the dough was basically frying. Uh, and that would help it to rise a bit, like it would rise in the pan. And then I'd have my oven uh, set up as high as it would go. As soon as I'm done making the pizza, I throw it in the oven for like 10 minutes and it would come out perfect every time. Put a little bit, a little bit of olive oil on on the on the crust, and it was just like incredible. Some of the best pizza you've ever had. Amazing. Back already? As it turns out, Bob, you sent us right into a dragon's den. You used to make the dough as well, or just topping? I, I can make the dough, but I uh, have mixed results with making dough, so it's just easier to buy it. And for me, since my cast iron pan is pretty small, it's small enough, but big enough that a, a per pizza is like a personal pizza. Like that's as much as I need for just me. I'd basically buy the dough, and when I got it home, I would split it up into four dough balls, throw three in the freezer, and then one uh, would be like, enough for a personal pizza so uh if i wanted pizza i'd take a dough ball and throw it in the fridge and it would be defrosted by the time i uh w like wanted to eat it that night and the, the nice thing about it is it wouldn't be completely defrosted and like slightly frozen dough is actually really easy to work with if you want to like you know like you don't even need as much flour for instance to uh work with it so you could you could throw it on your chopping board and just kind of you know flatten it a little bit so you can throw it in the pan don't worry we vanquished it for you you killed my dragon but I put it in there to keep it safe I needed it to pay the Colosseum ringmaster now you really got me in trouble it's very unpleasant and has all these guards that what on earth are you blabbing about Sorry, babbling about. Who is this guy, and what Colosseum? He got here about the same time he ventured out, just moved right into my turf. Almost overnight, he refurbished the old auction house into an arena, and... Just tell us where the Necronomicog is already. Well, he's corrupt to the core. If someone around here knows anything about an ancient artifact corrupting the hearts and minds of people, my bet's on him. And if you're already going there, maybe you can tell him it's going to be a while before I can procure another dragon. I'm sure he'll be reasonable about it. If he doesn't, we'll straighten him out. Let's go check out this Colosseum. Hmm. I think that all good RPGs require a uh, Colosseum chapter. So I'm excited for this one, but that was two chapters and it's been two hours. So let's move on to the feature segment. I hope you all enjoyed the Steam World Quest segment. 